exactly what it is that you did. And the final piece is to let them know what the result of your actions were. I highly encourage you to use this tool. It comes across very, very well. Example, if, you're, if you encounter a hiring manager and they said something to you like this, they said, tell me about, a little bit about teamwork. Explain teamwork to you. He said, well, let me tell you a situation. I was in a business fraternity. We had a six-week uh, business situation we were taking on. We were going to establish a vendor, set up a marketing plan, sell Easter lilies over a six-week six period. Our business fraternity was going to work together as a team to accomplish this and hopefully make a little bit of a profit and give us a sense of what it's like to run a business on a small scale. That was the situation I was in. The piece that I took on, the actual task that I decided that I was going to do, was it was my job to go out and identify some local vendors <coughs> for these Easter companies and negotiate with them a reasonable price so we could make a profit. One of the things that I noticed was that our team was not working very well together. People were at each other's throats, they were talking behind each other's back. And I told myself that from a teamwork standpoint, we needed to be better about working together or we weren't going to turn a profit on this thing. We weren't going to make this business simulation turn out well. So what I did, based on this lack of teamwork, is I set up a few situations after class where we all got together and the objective was just to get to know each other. We got together at a couple local bars and then we actually met in the student union a few times after class. And uh, the objective, again, was just to get to know each other. As a matter of fact, I even set up a little golf tournament for us, a local nine-hole course, just to get to know each other outside of the school setting. Now, the overall result of this, this, me recognizing the lack of teamwork and then putting those social things together, is we not only negotiated a fair contract with our vendors, we set up the whole marketing plan, the distribution, and the delivery, and we ended up turning a 40% profit over a six week project. Now, I gotta tell you, that if you're a hired manager, you see a, hear a fresh-faced person out of college giving a response like that, you're going, oh, well, that's hot. And it's all about SCAR. Okay? It's all about SCAR. So I encourage you to use that when you give responses to these questions that these hiring managers are going to fire at you. You guys remember that about three or four months ago? Jan Brewer, the governor of Arizona. That was uh, President Obama. He arrived in Phoenix and they had this little run in on the tarmac. Do you remember that? And nobody overheard it, nobody could hear what was being said. You don't even have to say a word and you'll still be heard. This leads to this whole idea of body language. Body language. So even though nobody could overhear what the, she was saying to him, she was speaking pretty loud, wasn't she? I mean, somebody sticks a finger about three inches from your nose. They're, they're making a pretty good point. Have you all heard the, the, the breakdown of communication skills, body language, nonverbals, and all that, the power of that? All right, this is my lecture time. Don't sit there with 
with your arms crossed. Keep your hands above the table. Okay. Make good eye contact. Now, if that makes you a little bit nervous, looking a stranger in the eyes, the eyes, window of the soul, all that kind of stuff, I'll tell you a little secret. You can actually look at the bridge of a person's nose, right here. They'll think you're looking into their eyes, but you don't get all that nervy stuff about looking directly into their eyes. A little tool, but it's important that you make eye contact, and if you do that, they'll have the perception that you are making eye contact with them. So that's huge. Keep what this tells you is the actual words that you've rehearsed or you use, minor part of communication. The nonverbals, your gestures, your positioning, don't be standing there like this, okay? Be confident, situate yourself, look them straight in the eye. 58% and 35, 93% of communication happens nonverbally. When you think about that in an interview situation, you have to make sure you speak confidently and then your gestures and your positioning and so forth and eye contact are right on track. Now, the closing. This is a situation where it's very typical. Hiring managers, after they get through the question and answer period, they'll turn it over to you as a candidate and say, what questions do you have of me? Very common practice in the interview, all right? Now, if all you have a choice, and you're pretty much most of you are adults, you can do anything you want to. But I will highly, I will advise you very highly is don't only talk about salary and benefits. Okay. Don't only, if that's of interest, hopefully you had a discussion with a recruiter or something about that so you know that already. But if all you want to know is the hours you're going to work and oh, can I put on my Facebook page while I'm at work? And, how much overtime can I get? If you're all about money and benefits and how can I play at work, you may as well forget about it. Ask some good questions of this hiring manager about their perception of how a person can move up. How can they be successful? Ask the, ask the hiring manager questions about, tell me a little bit about how important being a team player is in this organization. Those kinds of things. Ask them probing questions that tell the hiring manager that you've done your homework and that you're not just trying to get this job to pay off your student loans, okay? It's critical. It's absolutely critical. Now, this final piece about that, where I told you, and we all know the first impression piece, and, and Gail did a great job of explaining that. The same thing holds true when you're getting ready to walk out of this room. And the, the literature is called the principle of primacy and recency, okay? Now what that means is that when you throw a bunch of information at human beings, the odds are they will only remember what came first and what came last. Overlay that onto an interview, your first impression has got to be solid, but I'll tell you, if you practice the deal of shaking hands firmly, and making solid eye contact and speaking confidently and you make a good first impression doing that and then when you're going out the door you go thank you very much <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> now if you as you're leaving that interview if you wimp out they'll they'll remember that so that's what the primacy and recency part that principle talks about. Make a good solid first impression and then make an even more solid impression when you're leaving. Okay. Yeah. Alright, with that, thank you. By the way, if you have more questions.